Hello and welcome to the second episode of Things of the Month. So this is the monthly show where I do a little catch up with all the sort of various uh, gadgets that I'm playing around with for this month. So this episode is going to be a little bit uh, Nintendo Switch heavy given that I just got this. So I'm going to talk about this and a bit about Zelda, a bit about Splatoon. But I'm also going to talk a bit about the uh, Audio Technica LS50. So if that's what you're interested in, then uh, check out the time code in the description of the video and you can skip right there if that's what you want to see. Firstly though, I just want to do a bit of housekeeping. As you may have noticed, I'm kind of increasing the frequency of uploads to the channel. And that's because, you know, I'm running a bit of an experiment. I'm trying to get a bit more serious about the uploads, a bit more serious about the channel. And I want to see what happens if I sort of, you know, increase the consistency and the frequency by which I upload videos. And I would love to check in with you just to hear what you think, uh, what you like, what you don't like, how you think this is going. Uh, as always, open for you to leave a comment and let me know exactly what you think. Uh, and again, if you value what I do, now is a great time to, uh, you know, chuck me a couple of bucks on Patreon because that will more or less let me know that this is the sort of right trend, uh, the direction that I should be going in. So. Um, thank you in advance for your comments uh, and let's get right into it. So let's start with the Nintendo Switch and more specifically with the question, Lachlan, why did you get a Nintendo Switch? Because I get this a lot. This is like the, the second response I get when I tell people I bought a Switch. Um, because a lot of people say, you know, there's not many games on the platform um, and it's pretty expensive. It is a really really expensive device. A Switch in Australia costs the same as a PlayStation 4. So I thought I would give you a little bit of my rationale and a little insight into how I buy consoles. So first of all, I tend to buy consoles when there is one game that I really, really want to play and there's really no way for me to play it on any other platform. So for instance, uh, the PlayStation Vita I bought to play Persona 4 Golden and I really wasn't sure what else uh, on the platform I was going to enjoy. So I took a little bit of a gamble in buying the Vita and it turned out that the bet kind of paid off for me because I bought in on this platform Persona 4 Golden and I've played and finished. Uh, I think finishing a game is probably an indication of how much you are enjoy using the platform. I finished more games on the Vita than I have on any other console that I've owned because I, I played through all the Danganronpa games, Persona 4, Persona 4 Golden, um, sorry, Persona 4 Dancing All Night, a lot of Persona games. Um, uh, what, what, what else was there? Like Freedom Wars, Hotline Miami. That was a game that I couldn't finish on PC because you could not get me to sit down for several hours in front of a PC and play that fast twitch because I would die from stress. But somehow waiting for a train in the morning, I could throw my head against a wall a few times and, and try to get through one stage of Hotline Miami. Um, and things like Steins Gate. You know, lots of uh, platforms, lots of games that I thought worked really well on a portable platform. And I'm sort of a lazy kind of person. So one thing I really like about the Vita is that I can sit in bed and play games with it. And I've been trying recently to use my Vita to, uh, you know, use remote play so I can play Persona 5 in bed. But for some reason, as soon as someone else starts watching a YouTube video in the house, the uh, remote play drops out. So that's not working out so well. Probably Australian internet kind of story again. But all in all, my bet with the Vita played off and I'm really glad that I got this platform. But it doesn't always work out because there's my Wii U, which I also bought to play one game and that was Splatoon. And with Splatoon, um, I loved Splatoon, but pretty much I didn't play, I didn't really play that many other games uh, on the Wii U. Um, and that's why I don't have it in my hand right now because I traded it in to buy the Switch. So I'm hoping with the Switch that it works out a little more like my bet with the Vita. And I'm a little more confident in the Switch than I am with the Wii U uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, this thing has been selling like crazy, uh, especially in Japan. Now in Japan, they love their portable consoles. 
uh, I assume it has something to do with the limited uh, living space, but also, you know, more efficient mass transit systems. So, so they, they have more chances to sort of play uh, with a, a portable on the go. Uh, and if it sells well, that means hopefully there's going to be money on the table, which will attract third party developers and the third party developers will grow the roster of games for the Switch. I think they're a bit hesitant now because they were burnt on the Wii U. But as I said, if there's money on the table, they'll probably be interested, at least in Japan. And that's not such a big deal for me because I love my sort of weeby games. Um, all the games that I just rattled off the Vita are basically sort of um, weeb games that I enjoy. And I'm hoping that that sort of crossover occurs for the Switch as well, which is happily not region locked, which is cool. As far as the games that I've been playing on the Switch have, have gone, I got Zelda and that has been amazing. I don't know if it's a perfect 10 out of 10 game, but I can tell you that it really for me is the game, and I've never played a Zelda game before, but the game for me is like all my favorite parts from Skyrim, all my favorite aspects of Skyrim distilled into a, a, a different game and, and a much more streamlined, a much more just beautiful and enjoyable game. And when I play Skyrim, I, I really love that sense of exploration. I like that sense of stumbling upon things that, um, you know, stumbling upon things just on your travels. What was really delightful about Skyrim was systems collision. So there are like multiple systems in the game and the way that they uh, interact to create new sort of scenarios. It works really well and especially with Skyrim I installed a bunch of mods like survival mods where you had to camp or you had to adjust for uh, the temperature in the air so you don't freeze to death and you had to eat and you had to cook and you had to craft that sort of thing. I really liked the way that those sorts of uh, systems would combine into making a sort of a lot of people say it's like an immersive thing. I don't necessarily know it's an immersion thing but it is to me, it grounds you in the world and I really appreciate uh, that kind of gameplay. And Zelda has all that out of the box. I'll, I'll give you an idea. I was trying to learn how to cook in the game. The game was gonna teach you how to cook. Uh, I light a fire, I put a fish, um, I put a fish in my hands and then I just throw it onto the fire then it sets on fire and I'm like, yay, I'm cooking food. And then the grass sets on fire and then I set on fire and then I die. And to me, that's like, what an amazing... <laughs> that to me is just game of the year material, right? I, I, I just like the way that the systems interact and I especially love the charm of the game. Uh, the way that, and this is, this is like, this is what sets it apart from something like Skyrim in my mind, is that it really just feels good to do anything in the game. To, to the way that uh, Link animates when he's cooking, he just leans forward and his eyes go big and he's like, ooh, what's cooking? And then he goes, oh, if something bad happens. Um, the way he shivers when it's cold. Uh, the way, you know, monsters will just, you'll come up against a group of monsters and they'll be like, uh, chasing a, a, a boar around the plains or they'll be sort of like in a communal kind of mosh pit and that reminds me of things like Ico uh, where maybe the art assets aren't uh, really high fidelity maybe the, the hardware platform itself is not you know extremely powerful but it is art direction and it is an animation and that sort of thing that really brings the world to life. So that's what I really am enjoying so far in Zelda. So I'm up to the first village now and I'm trying to find the 10th chicken. Found nine chickens. There's one chicken that I just can't find and it is epic. I'll tell you like that, that this is the this is this is the most intense gaming experience to find that 10th chicken. Um, okay, also uh, I played Splatoon and particularly I was part of the four hour global test fire. Uh, for Splatoon uh, in Australia and uh, I can't really say much more about Splatoon beyond saying that Splatoon 2 is basically everything I liked about Splatoon except uh, now it's on the Switch, it's on a portable platform which is great. Uh, in terms of graphics it's pretty much the same. Uh, I noticed that there's a lot better kind of post-processing effects, the kind of sheen on the paint, uh, on the Inkling's tentacles, that sort of thing. It's really 
uh, nice little touch, subtle improvements. Um, but, you know, Splatoon was never really that much about the graphical fidelity for me. What really, again, charmed me was the art direction and the sort of, um, you know, conceit of having a, a world where humans have died out and then they've been replaced with us. With a, with a race of highly fashion conscious squid people. The thing I like about Splatoon, I'm not a big fan of first person shooters to begin with because I'm not, I don't have great spatial abilities. Number one, I'm not very good at first person shooters. And number two, I'm just not, um, I, I just find, I, I just find, uh, I don't really enjoy the sort of, of gameplay that revolves around just kind of killing people. Even, even on, um, my favorite shooter in, uh, and that was Killzone, remarkably enough. I know I'm going to get some flack about this, but it was Killzone on the PlayStation. What I enjoyed playing most was the classes that were, were like the tactician kind of classes where I'm putting spawn points for my team uh, to spawn in on. And I like that kind of more abstracted level, uh, strategic level of, of gameplay. I, I like that more than the kind of fast twitch reflex of, of shooting people to death which I'm not very good at to begin with. And so the reason why I like Splatoon is because the whole game is structured not really around killing people because it doesn't matter how many people you kill in a match, you won't win the match unless you control the most territory. And the whole point of painting territory in the map is to increase uh, your team's territory, number one. And when you paint, uh, when you paint into a arena, you're creating an avenue of approach for your team members because uh, Squid ink, um, inklings can travel through uh, their own colored paint very, very fast. So it's this really beautiful uh, integration of the idea of territory control and the idea of, of, of that kind of team play that I really liked. And again, I, I don't mind the shooting elements. I certainly like, you know, hiding behind, um, hiding behind corners and then just popping out and, and shooting people with the ink. But I'm really glad that uh, the kind of kill ratio basically is not the main focus of the game and that's why I enjoyed it and you can call me a Care Bear or whatever you like but I think it's awesome. Also, uh, after the global test fire, uh, I will say that I'm going to switch my allegiance from Marina. I was very impressed with Pearl's dance moves on the Splatfest uh, floor so that was awesome. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, do not worry, um, it's not for you. Anyway, let's talk about the Audio Technica LS50 IS. I just want to make a brief note about this uh, earphone. So I've I've been using it more, and I have to say that I really like uh, this earphone until I get to a bassy track, because as an earphone, uh, I think it, it does better than the Shure SE215 in terms of having a nice build, um, in having a sound where the, where the mids are a little cleaner, um, where the detail is a little more present, and that's really nice. But there's also a lot of bass, and I didn't really pick up on this as much when I did that demo against the LS70, but when I, you know, when I'm listening, I'm finding that on some tracks, the amount of bass, it's really solid. It's really kind of um, just, just impactful bass, but it's just too weighty on some tracks. And it's approaching the level where I find it obtrusive. I find it intrudes on the listening experience. The same way I felt about the TFZ that I bought in Hong Kong. When it gets to a level where there's too much bass, I just feel a little nauseous, and that's what's happening uh, with the LS50. So one thing I did was I switched the spin fit tips, um, and that has toned that down just a little bit. It helps a little, and I do recommend the spin fits if you get the LS50. I also had a listen to the uh, ATH E40 the other day against the LS50, and I had to say, even though that's a little more hot in the treble, uh, and it's closer to sounding like an M50X, basically, a little, lot more kind of V-shaped sizzle in the treble. I sort of think that the E40 might be a better choice than the LS50. Um, so I may have to do a little bit more of listening comparisons there. You know, if, if you really like your bass and you want something as an alternative to the SE215 that is well built uh, and has detachable cables and is decently comfortable, the uh, LS50 is not a bad choice. The one thing is I'm finding uh, this shape 
of the of the earpiece. It's all right. It's not as uncomfortable as it might first appear. Uh, and in normal wear, it's okay. I do find that it pushes against your ear a little when I'm kind of smiling or or I guess you know moving my jaw around too much. But in ordinary wear, it's not too bad. So we'll see how we go with that. Anyway, uh, that brings us to the end of this uh, Things of the Month episode. Let me know what you think. Drop in a comment. As always, you can support the channel and join the Discord channel if you head on over to patreon.com slash thing. And I'll see you next time. Bye.